In this video, we'll take a look at section 2.6, which is finding equations of lines. So our first objective, we're going to be finding the equation of a line given a specific criteria. So now when you're trying to find out what the equation of the line is, it all depends on what's given to you. So if you're given the slope and the y-intercept of a line, you're going to use slope-intercept form to find out what the equation of the line is. So you'll be given your m and you'll be given your b. So all you would have to do is just go ahead and plug it into that form, slope-intercept form, and it gives you the equation of the line. Now if you're given the slope and say just some random point x sub 1, y sub 1 that the line passes through, you're going to use point-slope form. So this is y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. Now, if you're given that the line passes through two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, what you have to do is first figure out what your slope is. So you're going to use the slope formula. And then you'll use that slope and one of the points given to you and plug it into the point-slope formula. Now, whenever you're trying to find out what the equation of a line is, you have to know what the slope is. So either the slope will be given to you or you're going to have to figure out what it is. Let's take a look at the first example. So find the equation of the line given the following conditions. So we have a slope of 3.4 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 8. So we're given a slope of 3.4, so our m is 3.4, and we're given a y-intercept of 0, negative 8. So since we're given the slope and the y-intercept, we go ahead and use y equals mx plus b. So you'll plug in your m, plug in your b, and that gives you the equation of the line. So we have y is equal to, so our m is 3.4. So we have 3.4x plus, and now our b, which is negative 8. And now if we simplify it, we get y is equal to 3.4x minus 8. Now this is the equation of the line with slope 3.4 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 8. Let's take a look at uh, another example, a little bit harder. Find the equation of the line given the following conditions. We have m is equal to 3, and it passes through 1, negative 2. So we're given the slope, and we're given that the line passes through this point, 1, negative 2. Now, first thing you want to check is if that point that's given to you is the y-intercept. Because if it is the y-intercept, you could go ahead and use y equals mx plus b. But I know that that point that's given to me is not the y-intercept because my x is not 0. Okay. So if your x is not 0, then this cannot be the y-intercept. So we have to go ahead and use the point slope formula. So we have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And now let's plug in our information. So we have y minus now my y1 is negative 2. I have equal to m, which is 3. And I have times x minus x sub 1, which is 1. Now let's go ahead and simplify. So first thing I could do to simplify, this minus minus on the left-hand side, I could change that to plus. So I have y plus 2 is equal to. Now this 3, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this out. So I have 3x minus 3. And now the last thing that you want to do is solve for y. So go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. We get y is equal to 3x minus 5. So now this is the equation of the line. It has a slope of 3, and it passes through the point 1, negative 2. Let's try another one that's uh, similar to that one. So find the equation of the line. Given the following conditions, we have m is equal to negative 2 thirds, and it passes through the point 1, 4. So we have y minus, and now my y1 is 4. And I have equal to my m, which is negative 2 thirds. I have times x minus my x1 is 1. And I'll simplify. So let's go ahead and distribute out this negative 2 thirds to each one of these. So I have y minus 4 is equal to. 
I have negative two-thirds x plus two-thirds. Next step, get y by itself. Let's add four to both sides. I get y is equal to negative two-thirds x. Now, in order for me to add two-thirds and four with each other, I have to have the same denominator. So let's do some side work here. So I want to do two-thirds plus four. So this four changes it to four over one. Now our LCD here is three, so this becomes two-thirds plus, so I have to multiply the top and the bottom by three. I get 12 over three, which gives me 15 thirds. So I have y is equal to negative two-thirds x plus 15 over three. Okay. Now this problem a little bit different here. Find the equation on the line given the following conditions. We're given that this line passes through negative three, negative five, and negative four, 12. Notice that we're not given a slope here. But just remember, whenever you're trying to find the equation of a line, you need to know what the slope is. But since we're given two points, we could go ahead and figure out what the slope is using our slope formula. We have y2 minus y1. So I have 12 minus negative five all over x2 minus x1. Now let's simplify it. So 12 minus negative five, that changes into 12 plus five. All over, this becomes negative four plus three. So I got 17 over negative one, which gives me negative 17. So now I know what my slope is. So I have a slope of negative 17, and now I'm given two points. You're going to go ahead and just choose one of these. I'm going to choose the first point that was given to me. And now you plug it into the point slope formula. So we have y minus, and now my y1, which is negative 5. I have equal to my m, which is negative 17. And I have times x minus x1, which is negative 3. And now let's go ahead and start to simplify. So remember the minus minuses, you have to change those to plus to begin. So you have y plus five is equal to negative 17 times, this becomes x plus three. Now let's go ahead and distribute this negative 17 out. We get y plus five is equal to negative 17 x minus 51. And then one last step is to get rid of that five. Let's go ahead and subtract five from both sides. We get y is equal to, we get negative 17 x minus 56. And now this would be the equation of the line that passes through those two points. Now the next example's a little bit different. So it's this time we're given, find the equation of the line given the following conditions. Now we're told that it passes through the point two negative one and it's parallel to 9x minus 3y equals 5. So it has to pass through this point, and it has to be parallel to this other line. Well, what we learned about parallel lines, in order for two lines to be parallel, remember, they have to have the same slope. So let's go ahead and figure out what the slope is of the line that was given to us. And then we could go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 9x from both sides. I want to get this into slope intercept form so that way I can determine what the slope is. I get negative 3y is equal to negative 9x plus 5. Now divide by negative 3. I get y is equal to, this gives me positive 3x minus 5 thirds. So the slope for this particular line is 3. Now since the line that I'm trying to, since the line I'm trying to figure out the equation for, since it has to be parallel to this, the slope that I have to use would also be three. So I'd use a slope of three, and then I use the point that was given to me, which was two negative one, and now I plug it into the point slope formula. So I have y minus, now my y1, which is negative one, equal to my slope, which is three, and I have times x minus two, and now let's simplify. So the minus uh, negative one is gonna change into y plus one. I have equal to 
let's distribute out that 3. So you have 3x minus 6. Let me rewrite this up top. Okay, so I have y plus 1 is equal to 3x minus 6. Now let's go ahead and subtract 1 from each side. We get y is equal to 3x minus 7. So now the line that I found, the equation of this line, it passes through the point 2, negative 1, and it's also parallel to the line that was given to us. Here goes another problem. Find the equation of the line given the following conditions. This time it passes through 5, 4, and now it's perpendicular to this line. Okay, so we have 2x minus 4y is equal to 9. So the line that we're trying to find the equation for has to be perpendicular to this. Now just recall, in order for two lines to be perpendicular, the slopes have to be opposite reciprocals. So let's go ahead and find out the slope for this line to begin. Subtract two x from both sides. We get negative four y is equal to negative two x plus nine. And now divide both sides by negative four. So this gives me y is equal to so the negative 2x divided by negative 4, that gives me positive 1 half x. I have minus 9 over 4. So the slope for this particular line is 1 half. So now the line that I'm trying to find the equation for, since it has to be perpendicular, our slope has to be the opposite reciprocal, which is negative 2 over 1, which is negative 2. So our slope has to be negative 2 because remember the slopes have to be opposite reciprocals. So now I have a slope and I'm given this point. So let's go ahead and plug it into the point slope formula. We have y minus our y1 which is 4. I have equal to m which is negative 2. I have times x minus x1 which is 5. Okay, I plugged everything into my formula. All that's left to do is to simplify. So I have y minus 4 is equal to negative 2x plus 10. And let's go ahead and add 4 to both sides. I get y is equal to negative 2x plus 14. So this equation, the line uh, for this equation, it passes through 5, 4, and it's perpendicular to the line that's given to us. Now, one more example, and then we'll take a look at a different type of problem. So find the equation of the line given the following conditions. So it's telling us that it passes through the point 2, comma 3, and it's perpendicular to x equals 5. Okay. So I'm going to draw a graph first. So it has to be perpendicular to x equals 5. Well, x equals 5, so recall, this is a vertical line going through x equal to 5. So the line that we're looking for it has to pass through this point 2, comma 3, so it has to pass through this point and it has to be perpendicular to that vertical line. Well, the only way that a line can be perpendicular to a vertical line is if you have, so the only way that a line can cross this line and intersect at a 90 degree angle is if you have a vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal line. So it has to pass through the point that was given to us and it has to be perpendicular to that vertical line. So the line in blue, this is the line that we're looking uh, to find the equation for. So notice that we have a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have the form y equal to some number. So if you take a look at our graph, this has to be y equals 3. So this would be the equation of the line that passes through the point 2, 3, and it's perpendicular, perpendicular to x equals 5. One last problem. So word problem. 
For a service called Belmont Heating and Air Conditioning, charges $65, charges a $65 trip fee and $80 per hour for labor. Formulate a linear function for the total cost of the service call, CFT, where T is the length of the call in hours. Okay. So we're trying to write out a function for the total cost. And our T is supposed to be the length of the call. So you have C of T. This is equal to. So first, they charge a $65 trip fee. And then it's saying it charges $8 per hour for labor. So T is the number of hours. So for that part of the function, we'd have 80 times T. This will indicate how much you're going to pay for how long the labor was for. So you have 80 T and then we have plus, we have the $65 trip fee. So this will give you the total cost for say like the service call. Now for part B when we want to graph the model, so we want to graph this function. I'm going to let the horizontal be my t, the number of hours. And then the vertical line be my cost, <clears throat> my cost depending on hours. So what we want to do here is find two points. And now when I work this out, I'm going to go ahead and use increments of 10. I'm going to have to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So first, okay, we want to find out two points. Let's say this is one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, and so on. So we wanted to find two points that fits this function. So one number I'm going to plug in for t, let's say 0. So if t is equal to 0, we'd have 80 times 0, which gives me 0, plus 65 gives me 65. So that will give me this point right over here. Now I just need to find out one more point since this is a linear function, it has to be a straight line. I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1 for my t. So I'd have 80 times 1, which is 80, and then plus 65 gives me 145. I actually should have made this graph a little bit bigger than that. Okay. So we have 1 and 145, which would be about right over here. Now that we have two points, we can go ahead and connect them, and that's going to give us the graph for this function. Now, part C is telling us to determine the cost of a two and a half hour service call. Okay. So we're given that the amount of time it took was two and a half hours, but we want to figure out the total cost. Let me go ahead and write out our function over here. So we have C of T, this was equal to 80T plus 65. So if I wanted to figure out what the total cost will be, first, instead of dealing with this mixed number, let's change this into, let's say an improper fraction. So two and a half, to change this into an improper fraction, you multiply the denominator with the whole number and then add the numerator. So you have two times two, which is four, plus one gives you five. And you keep the denominator the same. So what I'm going to do is plug in 5 halves into my function. So I have 80 times 5 halves. And I have plus 65. Now go ahead and simplify it. Okay. So one thing that you could do to start to simplify, you could cross cancel. 2 goes into 2 once, it goes into 80 40, time, uh, 40 times. 
So you're left with 40 times 5, which is 200. And you have plus the 65. So this gives you 265. So the total cost would be $265. So that was it for section 2.6. Make sure to ask questions if you have any, and I'll be more than willing to help you out.